What's up everybody, this is Jack Sputnik here and today we are going to be talking about making stunning photos or taking stunning photos, I guess, with kit lens. Those lenses generally come in different sizes for different types of sensors and have maybe a little bit of a bad reputation that they are not the best out there. Back, 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 back in the years they were, but nowadays they offer really decent quality and specifically to prove that point, we will be using different kit lens. What kit lens is? So kit lens basically, as the name indicates, is a lens that comes in kit, usually with your camera. Why is it cheaper? What's the difference between pro lens and kit lens? One is build quality. Usually those lenses are lighter, which can also be advantage for traveling photographers and a little bit smaller. Again, this can be an uh, advantage. Uh, for photographers that want to save on kilograms and spacing back and they are usually made mainly of plastic or some other materials and the main difference here is that uh, those zoom lenses because they are normally zoom lenses are not that bright as for example prime lenses but it's surprising how much you can do with just a standard kit lens. <laughs> Uh, now I will show you how to use kit lens, in this case a Sony kit lens, but it doesn't really matter. Whatever kit lens you have, you can use the same settings as I'm, as I'm using. So remember, this is a bright day, so I'm at ISO 100. In this case, this is the lowest ISO possible on Sony system. I'm using f-stop 11. So whatever lens, even the worst lens of this world, if you stop it down to f9, 10, 11 or 16, it will work just fine and in this case i want to have this boat you know close to me and show like beautiful old center of faro in the background i'm in a mode which is aperture priority mode on my camera so these are the settings so one, once again iso at 100 the lowest possible on your camera it may be 200 in, in case of some cameras i'm at f11 and I'm at aperture priority mode. I'm using the widest possible focal length. And in case of this lens is 16. So the lowest the value of the millimeters on your lens, the wider the picture gets, the more you see basically. So in this case it's 16. It's some, in some lenses, crop lenses, it is 18. If you're using full frame uh, kit lens, it, it will probably be something like 28. And if you're using Micro Four Thirds camera, it can be something like 14, 12, this kind of um, focal length. But basically you want the widest possible. So in this case, I'm on 16. Okay, so I'm gonna take a photo and let's see how that photo looks. One of the important factors is that you want to frame your photo right. So what I had turned on is rule of thirds. So I'm using rule of thirds as my basic to go rule to take photographs of, of, of anything basically when it comes to landscape specifically. And one of the things you want to remember about not only that you stand in one place and this is what you take, but if you are not totally satisfied, you feel that you are not totally satisfied with the picture, you can search for another uh, frame. So in this case, I will move myself like away from the boat to have it all in the frame. And I will move my camera a little bit up and look at the difference. So now you can see the difference between photo that is framed just right and photo that is framed almost right. And this is it. This is not about the lens. This is not about the equipment you use, but about the photographer. Very important notice here that I was using raw files, like I was shooting in raw, um, and I did edit those raw files because that's what I normally do. This is more advanced technique, but if you shoot in JPEG, you're good to go. Those pictures will not look as good as processed raw files, but they will look good if you used all those rules. Uh, that I'm showing you. One of the important factors also is to keep the camera leveled to get the horizon straight which is super important in landscape photography. So I have a leveling tool on in my camera and this is pretty pretty cool because I always know when my camera is straight. If you don't have this leveling tool in your camera you can basically see 
more or less if the horizon is or isn't straight or if your camera is or isn't straight when uh, compared to the ground. In one of the tutorials how to shoot like great photo photos with um, you know basic camera with kit lens I already showed you like uh, how to process your photos how to do some basics of processing so it's nothing scary it doesn't have to be expensive you have free software to do that and you are good to go and now let's move to the next scenario this is portrait photography with kit lens and we were switched to Canon system. So in this part of our tutorial, I want to show you how to utilize a kit lens, uh, the lens that comes with the camera, as we said before, to shoot great portraits. And very important disclaimer is that it's not only about using the tool, but it's also about working with your model. And in most tutorials I've seen out there on YouTube, um, most guys will mention that you have to have these or that setting. But one of the key features of portrait is working with your model it's like like showing the character of your model showing emotions what are settings that you want to have to take portraits step by step so first first thing as i show you before like obviously you have to turn on your camera right then you want to set your lens to 55. next step you want to set your f-stop to you know the lowest value possible so in this case, when you're setting your f-stop, you see, you go all the way, you see, you go to 5.6, we're on 5.6 right now, and this is our setting, perfect setting for portraits that we can get with this lens. And one more important disclaimer, we have, as you see, this value here. Can you see this value here? Yes, ISO, we have at 100 because it's a bright, day we have sunlight and though we are now filming and we will be shooting in shade because this is something that i like for portraits it's it gives you like beautiful soft light you don't want to go too high with iso because this doesn't work great for picture quality so the lowest the iso the less noise the higher picture quality i'm simplifying some things here obviously but i just want you to have ready recipe to take out your camera, go out and start shooting and get great results. So first of all, let's take a look at a little example right now. Why do I say that a long focal length, so higher value of focal length is better for portraits? So let's have a comparison. How does a portrait look on 80 millimeters, for example, 35 millimeters? And now let's take a look at a portrait shot at 55 millimeters. Can you see the difference? At 18 millimeters, it's like you have this barrel effect. This lens causes this, you know, funny distortion. You don't want this barrel effect there, right? You want this picture to make them, to make your model look the best possible. So that's why I'm saying go to longer focal lengths. Okay, so now I want to show you how to how to shoot and how to work with your model with those settings that I just showed you, okay? So we will invite our model now, Adriana, and she will work with us and I will show you how to shoot great portraits. One thing that I didn't explain fully is why do we want this f5.6, so this f-stop, the lowest possible. It's because of the blurry background. And now you can see a little demonstration. It's a difference between f5.6, f9, and F16. So as you take a look at these pictures one by one in sequence, you can see that the background, those green doors behind our model are becoming sharper and sharper. And this is not the best thing for portrait because we want face to stand out from the background. And since we don't have a bright lens because kit lens is not a bright lens designed for portrait photography, we want to have our model as far from background as possible. So in this case, we will use this white wall behind. In shade, we will be close to the wall, so there's nothing close behind our model, and we will get some stunning results with kit lens. Okay, so let's start doing some photos. As you could see, you can take a lot of great photos with just a kit lens. And it's really like the rule is there. 80% of photography can be done with just one lens. 
in this case our zoom kit lens and i'm not saying it's the best tool out there if you can afford it and if you want to progress with your photography, I do recommend to buy prime lens and maybe more specified lens as your tools, but you can do a lot with kit lens. And in this case, I showed you like uh, in this tutorial, I wanted to show you how to take beautiful landscapes and how to take beautiful portraits with this little plastic fantastic guy. I hope you guys liked it. And we would like to thank Adriana, our model, elbow bump. <laughs> I hope you guys liked it. So please don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to leave comments. What kind of content would you like to see in future on Jack Sputnik channel, okay? So see you guys in next episode.